The Quran on Geology Dr. Allison P. Palmer About our speaker, born and raised in New Jersey, A.R., Pete Palmer earned his B.S. in Geology from Pennsylvania State in 1946 and a Ph.D. in Geology from the University of Minnesota in 1950. During his lengthy career, he has held various positions in geology and paleontology, including Cambrian Geologist, Paleontologist, U.S. Geological Survey in Washington, D.C. from 1950 to 1966, Professor of Geology, State University of New York at Stony Brook from 1966 to 1980, and Centennial Science Program Coordinator, Mega Editor for about 40 volumes of multi-authored books on the Geology of North America for the Geological Society of America in Boulder from 1980 to 1993. Since 1993, he has been recentered as President of the small non-profit institute for Cambrian Studies. Dr. Allison Pete Palmer will now take you on an historic passage through time, using the now recently obtained knowledge from geological sciences, which he verifies so wondrously using chosen verses from the Quran and clearly stated comments of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, known as Hadith. In order to discuss the significance of geological ideas or perceptions from the Quran and Hadith, it is first necessary to provide some background information describing where geology is today and how it got there. Geology began as a science slightly less than 200 years ago. Although various geological perceptions date back to Aristotle over 2,000 years ago, these perceptions were never integrated into an identifiable science until James Hutton recognized the implications of the now famous angular unconformity at Sicker Point in Western Scotland in 1788. The Earth's crust was deformed and these sediments, now cemented into rock, were tilted and a plain was developed by erosion across their upturned edges. More sediments, a minimum of 2,100 meters thick, accumulated on this plain and in the course of time were cemented to form rock. Erosion of this thick series of rocks, which is still in progress at the present time, has cut a deep canyon through these rocks, exposing the evidence of their history. This deeply eroded land surface is essentially the only land surface that human beings have ever seen. But what a magnificent history is revealed. The vastness of this history is clearly demanded by the logical implications of the angular unconformity. This evidence that the earth had a long history far beyond the memory of man was the basis for the science of geology. In the two centuries since Hutton saw and understood his angular unconformity in Scotland, geologists have been busily, busy unraveling this history. The unraveling was helped by several additional fundamental but simple ideas. First, Shells, bones, and plant remains found in rocks were recognized as records of life of the past. By the early 1800s, it was further recognized that the record of life in the rocks was different than it is today, and that the further back in time one went, that is, in lower and lower layers in the sequences of layered rocks, the more different the fossil record became. Thus, an empirical succession of geological ages was established, each age was characterized by different assemblages of fossils found in the rocks. What do the Quran and Hadith say about all of this? Some key words from various parts of the Quran and Hadith have interesting implications. According to Surah 29, Ayah 20, God says, walk through the earth and see how God did originate creation. The story that I have just presented is the product of thousands of geologists walking through the earth observing and thinking about their observations, primarily since the early 1800s. Next slide. Surah 79, Ayah 31, discussing creation and the earth, states, He draweth out there from its moisture. Although this seems to be in a context of springs because the following phrase mentions pastures, it is permissible to consider that this refers to outgassing of volcanoes early in earth history. 
Volcanic gases include large amounts of water vapor and carbon dioxide. We believe that volcanoes early in Earth's history were the sources for the oceans and the atmosphere, an understanding only reached within the last century. Next slide. IS-79, I mean, Schuster 79, IS-32 states, also in the context of creation, and the mountains hath he firmly fixed. Similar mention of mountains is found in several other suras. It is permissible to interpret this to imply that mountains are rooted and that modern, ge and modern geophysics has established deep crustal roots for the axial parts of mountain systems at converging plate boundaries. Several suras mention geological perceptions tied to earthquakes. Next slide. Sura 86, Ayah 12, in a context of predicting happenings on the Day of Judgment, states, and by the earth, which has faults. And Sura 67, Ayah 16, next slide. In a context of punishment for unbelievers, states, are you sure that God will not cause you to be swallowed up by the earth when it is turbulent? It is permissible to interpret these suras as evidence of the awareness of great faults within the earth and of a turbulent interior, parts of the recent developments in plate tectonics. Other suras seem to refer to changing dimensions of continents. Next slide. In a context of creation, Surah 70, Ayah 30 says, and the earth, here in the sense of continents, moreover, hath he expanded. Next slide. Surah 13, I have 41, in a context referring to the power of God, states, See they not that we gradually reduce the continents? And in Surah 13, Ayah 3, in the context of creation, we see, And it is he who expanded the earth and set thereon mountains standing firm and rivers. The concept of change in the geographic dimensions of the continents is a very modern concept. Perhaps the most intriguing thoughts are from a hadith in Sahih Muslim, where Muhammad states as one of the signs of the coming of the Day of Judgment, next slide, that Arab areas will return to being return to being fertile and green and with rivers. The archaeological and geological evidence that they once were green and will become green again is less than a century old. I have been asked, could Muhammad personally have known these things? The answer of a cautious scientist is, it is not impossible but it would require a very sophisticated awareness of natural history. The Middle East has been and still is one of the more earthquake-prone parts of the world. Oral tradition may have mentioned fractures opening during earthquakes, and certainly the earth trembles as if its interior were turbulent on such occasions. In summary, the Islamic texts can be divided into three categories related to the past, the present, and the future. References to the past are expanding and shrinking of the earth, fixing of the mountains, deriving moisture from the earth's interior, and description of the past climate of the Arabian Peninsula. References to the present are the presence of great faults, a turbulent earth interior, and changing dimensions of the continents. References to the future are predictions about the return of better climatic conditions to the Arabian Peninsula. What is the significance of these statements made 1,400 years ago, long before the beginning of the new science of geology? We need research into the history of early Middle Eastern oral traditions to know whether, in fact, such historical events have been reported. If there is no such record, it strengthens the belief that God transmitted through Muhammad bits of his knowledge that we have only discovered for ourselves in recent times. We look forward to a continuing dialogue on the topic of science and the Quran uh, in the context of geology. Thank you very much.